Hey guys, I wanted to show you today what we're up to down here. We're on a brand new basement here. We're about uh, a week and a day into this and we're, we're going to be hanging drywall later this week. Today what we're doing is we're wrapping up uh, our plumbing. Now this job has a walk-up bar that's going to have a sink. We also have a three-quarter bathroom which is going to have a five-foot shower. Yeah, and we're roughing in the drain lines and I know a lot of you guys wonder how to uh, rough in a bar in a bathroom. So we're just going to go over here. I'll explain to you how we're laying out the drain lines and the vent lines because the stuff has to be vented. Uh, I'm just going to point the camera around and kind of go over what's happening right now. And then as we get the project finished up here later today and we get everything in, uh, I'll show you what the finished product rough in looks like. And that way you'll have a, a good idea, a good concept on what your plumbing should look like. Again, codes could be a little different, but it'll give you a rough idea as to what's involved and what it should look like when you're finished. So let's take a look at this right now and uh, I'll explain to you what's happening. Okay, so in this area here that's right directly in front of me here, uh, I've got the stairs coming down here from that stairway wall over to what will become the bathroom door. I have this eight foot section that will be an eight foot walk up bar. The rough in that, we've, that we have in here so far is, um, I've got my rough in PEX, which is the white half inch PEX line. Now this also comes in red and blue. You can do your cold and blue and your hide and red if you want. We just choose to do it all in white. Uh, we buy the stuff in, a, in 100 foot rolls over at Home Depot. And right now what we have set up here is we have our, our hot line, which is on the left, and our cold line, which is on the right. And an easy way to remember that is, is hot is wrong, cold is right. Okay, that's how, that's how we always remember it. Your cold is always on the right. So what we have here uh, is uh, an item called a drop ear. Now I can pull the uh, PEX right off there. That's a drop ear that's set up for PEX plumbing. All right, it's got a half inch thread inside there. And this is where you'll thread a chrome nipple into here which will extend out and have the shut off on it so you can turn the water on and off that's going to go up to the sink. This is a drop ear. You can buy these at Home Depot. That's screwed to the uh, blocking, the wood blocking that we put between the studs. And this particular setup I think from the floor up to here is 19 inches. Alright, then the PEX tubing which is your water line. It's got a half inch diameter. The PEX just goes right over top of that ribbed part of the drop ear and then what we'll do is we'll put little half inch PEX rings on here and we'll crimp them on here alright and that will be a watertight seal this is the PEX water system it's the most acceptable newer water system out there it's not really new anymore but last 10, 10 15 years PEX has uh, pretty much all but replaced most copper applications so we got our hot line coming in on the left and our cold line coming in on the right in the middle here, we've got our drain line, all right? Now our drain line is running in inch and a half PVC. If we peek up over the wall here, you can see down here that this pipe right here that's running down, which is our drain line, which is pitched back to our sewage ejector, is inch and a half scheduled 40 PVC. All right, we're running right into a T here. This is a two inch T, and it's a two inch T two inch on these two sides to inch and a half. So we're going off the right side an inch and a half, which is our drain line. And we're coming off the two inch side into our two inch vent. All right, this is vented up here. Now this particular bathroom, or this particular bar sink rather, is vented to a studer vent. All right, this, this lets air into the line, but doesn't let air out. That way you'll get no odor from your, uh, from your sewage lines coming out. It only lets air in. All right, and it's called a studer vent. You can buy these at Home Depot. They're not acceptable everywhere for bar sinks and bathroom sinks, but in our area, we can use a Studer vent on a small bar sink. All right, we, it's not acceptable in the bathroom for the bathroom sink. We're gonna vent that differently, but you can use that Studer vent on a bar sink in our area, okay? That's code worthy here. All right, so that's what we have going on in that particular area there for the rough in plumbing. Again, rough in plumbing is your water lines and your drain lines being installed, the water lines aren't pressurized yet, and of course there's no sewage running through the lines, they're just roughed in, okay? This is the rough-in stage. Now, in most areas of the country, you're gonna have to get this rough-in plumbing inspected. Before you can insulate these walls, before you can hang drywall to cover those water lines and that inch and a half drain line, you're gonna have to get that inspected. 
All right, so that's what we got done so far for the bar. Now you can follow that inch and a half drain line. It's going to come down. It's going to turn the corner into the bathroom, which I'm going through the door into the bathroom now, and it's going to run around, and eventually it's going to drop into that pipe that's going down to the floor right there. All right, now that stub out right there, that rough-in pipe that's coming up out of the concrete floor right through the bottom plate of our wall was roughed in by the builder. Now you may or may not have plumbing that's been roughed in, in under your concrete floor by your builder. You may have to jack the floor open and install this stuff. Okay, I'm just showing you this particular job. There's more than one way to skin a cat when it comes to plumbing, your rough-in plumbing, all right? It just depends on if you have a sewage ejector or not, uh, if you got centrifugal feed plumbing that's going to go down into the floor and right out to your septic mound or your public sewer. Uh, it's going to depend on a lot of different variables what type of drain system you're going to have. But now what Jonathan's doing right now is he's connecting uh, the bathroom drain, um, which is going to be inch and a half in, and he's also connecting it to what's coming around the corner over there from the bar. All right, he's, he's putting the puzzle together here. Um, and again, the, the concept of what I'm showing you is always going to be the same, but the actual fittings, the length of the pipes, the fittings themselves, the way you're directing the pipes, uh, the drain lines, um, is really going to depend on your individual plumbing setup. All right, no two plumbing projects are exactly the same. But this this sink here in the bathroom will not be going to a studer vent. All right, we're going to bring it up. Out of that same T down there, you got, you got another one of those two-inch T's coming out the top. We're going to we're going to go two-inch pipe in there for our vent. We're going to come up inside the wall here, and we're going to turn our vent line and we're going to shoot it down behind the wall. And eventually, it's going to end up over there with the sewage ejector, which we can take a walk over there right now. Inside this closet here, in the floor, we have a pre-installed sewage ejector from the builder that we will be tying uh, our vent line into because there's going to be a big vent line coming out of there, a two inch vent line, which we will tie into the two inch vent line that's coming from the bathroom sink. All right, so we will be venting the bathroom sink into this sewage ejector closet and tying it into the vent line coming out of the pit. All right, but you know, for this video here, just know that just about anywhere in the country, you're going to have to vent your bathroom sink and your shower in most cases uh, in two inch vent line, two inch PVC vent line, and get it either over to your uh, sewage ejector vent line or directly outside. Or if the builder has pre-installed a vent line that you can tap into, uh, which we actually have up here. If I pan up there, you can see that that first pipe right there, that is actually the discharge line for the sewage ejector put in by the builder. And right behind it there, Zoom in on that there. There's another one with a, another two inch pipe with a cap on it. That actually is the vent line that we'll be tying all of our vents into from our bathroom. Okay, pre installed by the builder. Now, if the builder hadn't put that two inch line in there and capped it for future bathroom, we would have to run it outside ourselves. All right, but for this video, just know that you have to vent your bathroom and your bar plumbing. Vent lines are going to almost always be two inch PVC. You don't vent an inch and a half, you vent in two inch. And uh, in some areas, you can use the Studer vent like we're using right here on our bar. If you can't use a Studer vent, you're going to be doing regular two-inch vent lines that are going to eventually tie together and end up over at your sewage ejector or, like I said, an existing vent that the builder put in. And if you have neither, you'll be running it outside yourself. You'll be getting that vent line outside. All vent lines eventually end up outside the home so that they can vent into the fresh air outside. All right, now we do have a five foot shower going into this bathroom. Now you can look over here on the floor. Everything's jacked apart here. Uh, this was pre-existing plumbing, but we had to move it. All right, we had an existing toilet flange, which you can see down there. Uh, we had to move that a couple inches to uh, make it work out in here. So we had to jack the floor open to move that. Now nine times out of 10, for us anyway, even though the plumbing's been pre-installed under the floor, we're jacking the floor open, finding that existing plumbing that the builder put in, and we're moving things around. All right, so we're moving the, uh, the drain and the, and the two inch P-trap that will uh, be the drain line for our shower. All right, we had to move that uh, based on our shower pan and the inlet for the drain for our, for our new shower pan, we had to relocate 
that drain line opening and that two inch P-trap to fit the new shower pan. Over and look at the shower pan so you know what I mean. All right, so this, this particular shower pan, and we're standing in front of the, uh, the side of the, the pan that you'd actually walk in on. All right, this is, this is the curb side. Now, the location of that drain line was eight and a half inches off the edge this way and off the back wall, 14 and three quarters. All right, eight and a half, 14 and three quarters. So we had to come into the bathroom here and we had to find that coordinate, all right? So we came eight and a half inches off our front wall to the center and off this wall over here, we came over 14 and three quarters and we have that set up perfectly. So when we bring that shower pan in here, it fits right over top of that two inch pipe, which is, by the way, incidentally, it's, it's trapped in two inch. There's a trap down there under the concrete, two inch trap, and then it ties in to a two inch drain line goes through the floor underneath it and eventually ends up on the other side of this wall and empties into the sewage ejector all right so the rough in under the floor plumbing drain lines is all done set up eight and a half 14 and three quarters the toilet is set up off the back wall off the back framing to the center of the toilet we like to make ours 13 inches. So we're 13 inches off the framing to the center of the toilet flange. All right, and we did that. Now it wasn't originally there. I think it was like right over here somewhere. We had to move it back and over to make it work out for our application. All right, so if you have pre-existing plumbing in your floor from the builder, don't get too hung up on it. Most of the time you're gonna have to rent a jackhammer and move stuff around like we did here. And I get into that in a lot more detail at the Basement Finishing University in the Rough and Plumbing series. I show you exactly how we do this. And it's like four hours of video footage, part one and part two, that will show you how to do all of this. All this plumbing is explained in detail over at the university. Okay, so that's the rough in so far for some of the drain lines, some of the water lines. So you have to have the water lines roughed in here for the, uh, for the bar. We have the water lines just kind of hanging loose in here. We got a hot and cold water line getting ready to go down here and be hooked up to our drop ears. Again, here's those drop ears inside the bathroom. The hot's on the left, the cold's on the right. Uh, 19 inches off the concrete floor up to the center of these drop ears. Okay, you got the cold to the right of the drain, about two inches higher, and you got the left side here, which is the hot, about two inches higher. Than the, uh, than the center of the drain. And the drain, on most of our projects, we try to come out about 20 inches off the floor. 18 to 20 inches off the floor to the center of the drain opening, okay? And this will be set up for an, an inch and a quarter uh, line that'll come out of there to receive our inch and a quarter P-trap from our sink. And that looks like this, all right? That'll get hooked onto here and our P-trap our extension will go right into that inch and a quarter opening there. All right, that's called an inch and a quarter DeSanko. All right, that thing with the nut on the end there is called an inch and a quarter DeSanko, and that'll be hooked up right there like that. The vanity will, will be cut around this. This will be sticking through the drywall, and that's where our water from our P-trap will go in right there into the inch and a quarter DeSanko. We'll have what, that same setup over there at the bar sink as well. All right, and that's all inside the uh, the sink base. Um, we also have uh, the framing set up for our shower valve. And you can see that rectangle that I framed out there. The center of that rectangle is like 48 inches off the floor. And in the center there, we're going to have the shower valve. Okay, the shower valve's got a hot and cold inlet on left and right. It's got an outlet on the top, which will go up to the shower head. And if this was a tub, it would have an outlet on the bottom to go down and feed the tub spout. Now we'll be blocking off this one here with a, with a half inch cap because we don't have a tub, it's a shower. And we'll be hooking this up and our PEX lines will be, uh, will be hooked to the fittings that are on both sides of this valve. Okay? We'll be sweating in a half inch piece of copper in the top which will run up to the shower head. Should always come out of your valve with a sweat, with a sweat in. Uh, piece of copper for your tub spout and your shower head plumbing. All right? You should never use a pexy or uh, type of fitting for your spout, for the tub, or for the shower head. All right? You can have pex fittings left and right for the hot cold water into your valve, 
but what's coming out of the valve should be half inch copper sweated. That way you get uh, more water pressure. All right, so that's going to be installed right in the middle of that rectangle. Uh, we've still got a little bit of framing to do. We're going to mount that to a block of wood, and uh, then I'll show you how we're going to hook that up and what it looks like when it's finished. And that's about as far as we've gotten so far, bud. All right. So uh, I'll let you get back to work. I know. Talk, it. Am I driving you nuts? No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I wanted to show you the uh, the complete ensemble here, folks, for, for what we're using in probably nine out of ten of our basements. Uh, this is called the four-piece Kohler. It's made by Kohler. The model is Sterling. It's the four-piece Sterling Kohler uh, modular kit. Now, the reason that we're using the modular kit is because we can't get a one-piece five-foot shower into this house. Right, even though we've got a sliding door to the backyard, which most people don't even have this, it doesn't matter. You, you cannot open this door, all right? You cannot open this door and have enough room to get a full-size shower into this basement, all right? So what we get is the remodeler's shower, all right? That's what they're called. If you're going in to buy one, it, you're, you're looking for a remodeler's shower, uh, generally going to be four pieces, all right? You've got your front wall panel, your back wall panel, or I guess you would say your, your two side panels, your back wall panel, which is five foot wide, all right? This particular one, it's got an arch in the top and it's got a couple soap dishes built in, three on each side, all right? The side panels have a little bit of an arch to them as well, give it a little bit of style. And then you've got the five foot pan. Now, when you order your, your shower, you can get it a bunch of different ways. You can get a right hand drain standing at the, at the front of the shower, looking at the way that you would walk in. If it's to the right, it's a right hand drain. If it's to the left, it's a left hand drain. Most of them have a center drain. All right, we got the right hand drain for this particular model because our rough in plumbing from the builder was more located to the right side in the bathroom. And we did have to modify it a little bit, move it a couple inches. We just decided, well, let's just get a right-hand shower. We can make the modifications to the underground plumbing that's existing pretty easy. Um, and we won't have to redo it all under the floor. We would have had to redo it all under the floor if we went for a center drain or a left-hand drain. So look at your plumbing and get what's, uh, if you have existing plumbing, that is, and, and determine which model uh, drain you want to get. All right, we went for the right hand drain and that worked out well for us in this in this particular case. All right, so uh, you know, a lot of folks are perplexed really when it comes to what type of shower do we order. Now, this could have been a 4-foot unit as well. They make a 4-foot Sterling Kohler shower unit, which is very similar to this. It's just the pan's 4-foot and the back wall's 4-foot. The two end panels would be the same. All right, and you can get that 4-footer with a left or a right or a center drain as well. All right, this is uh, also in white, and you can get this in bone, you can get this in almond, you can get this in black, there's a bunch of different colors you can order this in. Standard would be white, all right? And this is about a, uh, an $800 setup right here, all right, to buy this. Um, and incidentally, the shower valve, which comes with the shower head and all the hardware for the shower, this is about $125 for the whole kit. All right, that comes with the valve and the shower head and, and the valve handle and all, and all the uh, scutcheons and everything also come, come in there for about 125 bucks or so. All right, so that's the five foot remodeler shower from Kohler and the model is a Sterling. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about tying in. Um, your new bathroom, your new bar plumbing is going to have to be tied in to the home's existing plumbing. So what we like to do is just find something that's as close as possible that we can tap into. Um, if you can come off three quarter inch and bring your half inch off to your bar in your bathroom uh, and half inch from three quarter, it's better, okay? If you don't have any three quarter inch that you can tap into that's local to your, to your project, then just tap into existing half inch. Now, I'm gonna show you where we're tapping in to the cold and the hot. Uh, in two entirely different locations based on where we could find it. So let me show you that now. Okay, uh, for our cold water, it worked out so that we uh, didn't have to go far at all. There was a half inch water line that we believe is going outside to an outside spigot um, that's coming right inside the closet where we're gonna have our ejector. 
the hot water. There wasn't anything close by down there by the bathroom or the bar. So we're all the way over here in this bedroom. And if we pan up here, you can see right up there, uh, we've got two three quarter inch lines right up there. One's hot, one's cold. So what we'll do is we'll go up there and we'll tap into a three quarter inch line, hot line uh, with a three quarter inch to half inch T. Okay, so let's take a look at those tie-ins. You can see our three quarter inch to half inch T. And we cut right into that existing three quarter inch hot line and came off the side with a half inch. And there's our crimp rings all crimped on there. And if we follow that half inch line over, it went up over top of this beam and right back into this uh, unfinished utility closet, which is gonna have the sewage ejector in it. And uh, one other thing that I wanted to show you, here's that half inch line coming, coming in over from the tie-in I just showed you. What we've done is we've put what's called inline shutoffs, half inch inline shutoffs here. And when we turn this on and off, we can control the flow of hot water and cold water to the bathroom and the bar. So if we ever have any maintenance over there with the sinks, toilets, shower, uh, we have the capability to kill the water to, to both of those areas. Now right beside it there is the cold water and if we trace that up and over we can see right up there is where we tapped into that half inch line that was pre-existing that we believe is going outside to a spigot. We just cut that in the middle and used a half inch by half inch by half inch T up there. Stole our cold water from an existing line right up above and right down over here to the cold water inline shut off. And then right back down into the cold water line which is <clears throat> running in both directions it's running back to the bathroom for the sink and the toilet and it's coming around and going through the wall here turning around there and it's heading on down here to the bar area to feed the bar it's cold water right down here and you can see that's right up top there we drilled some holes through the floor joists and we ran that half inch line right through the floor joists uh, from this unfinished closet right here there you can see it coming up and around and going down to the bar. So the tie-ins are real simple. Just find what's closest to you, whether it's half inch or three quarter inch. Get yourself some tees, and they're just regular PEX tees and regular PEX tee crimp rings, and cut your line <clears throat> and uh, and steal your cold water and your hot water from existing lines close to your work. And it's always nice if you can get those inline shutoffs on there too. So if you ever have to service, like I said, the bar, the bathroom, we'll have nice shutoffs to kill the water up to those two areas. And uh, we always try to do our tie-ins when we can in storage, or in this case, a uh, an unfinished utility closet that'll have the ejector. You can't always. I mean, we we could only get the cold water from inside this unfinished closet. We had to. Uh, we had to get our hot water out here in the living space, down here in the bedroom. So, you know, just find what you can. Now, down here where we stole the hot, the hot line, uh, you know, we needed an extra 25 foot of half inch PEX line to make it all the way over there to the utility closet, which is you know, more than halfway across the basement. But that was the closest hot water line we could find to do our hot water tunnel. Just find your closest line, whether it's a half inch or three quarter inch, closest to your project, and get up there with your PEX cutters, cut into the line. Now, if it was copper, we'd be doing the same thing. We'd be cutting into the existing copper line in the home, because a lot of homes don't have PEX that's pre-existing. But uh, you'd cut into the copper line, uh, and instead of using those crimp rings, where we crimp the PEX to the PEX, because that's what we had to work with, you'd have to get a uh, you know half inch or a three quarter inch fitting that's called a shark bite which you can just plug you can just plug those pieces of copper when you cut it out to make the tie-in you can plug that right into both sides of the shark bite tee alright that's a shark bite tee and I show you how to do that in the plumbing videos over at the basement finishing university in more detail uh, I show you all the different ways that you can tap in so the other way is going to be with the shark bite tees which is specifically made to make tying into copper quick and easy and uh, watertight so uh, that's a little spiel on our tie-ins for this particular job uh, let's move on to the next thing 
Okay, also, uh, I wanted to show you one other rough end. It's really not considered plumbing, but it's a rough end. It's in the bathroom, and that is the bathroom ceiling fan, all right? Every bathroom needs to be, uh, needs to have a fan installed, all right? You have to have a, an exhaust fan. Now, this is a light fan combo. It also has a light. You can mount your fan housing. That's the silver box. Anywhere you want in your bathroom, you try to get it as centrally located as you can. Uh, it does have a light in it, so you don't want it like right over top of your vanity, which would be right here, because the vanity is going to have a vanity light above it. So we try to get it out into the center of the bathroom. Um, we have a shower in this bathroom, so we also installed a, uh, a recessed light right in the center above the shower as well. Okay, so there's, there's going to be plenty of light in here. We got the shower light, we got a light in the, in the fan unit, and then we're going to have a vanity light as well on that wall right above uh, the center of our sink location. Okay, so you can also see up there we got four inch flex attached to the fan. All right, that's flex line, that's uh, your vent line. You'll get a small piece with your fan, but in this particular application here, we had to go about 30 feet, all right? We, uh, we had to go to the back of the house, which is like 30 feet over there, and get our vent line out the back of the house. And we're going up between the floor joists. All right, which will put our vent line above the drywall. And we took it right down and out. We, we drilled a four inch hole. We went right through the box joist, pulled our vent line outside. And we can take a walk out back. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so pan right up there, coming right, in, right out underneath the deck. Okay, it's got the flap on it there. Right, there's the other end there. That's the hood. All right, the hood is connected to that four inch flex line that was coming across the ceiling, the, the four inch flex line uh, being the vent line. But the bathroom fan needs to be vented outside. All right, so let's take a look at this plumbing here. Uh, we got everything tied in now. Everything's roughed in 100%. Uh, we did concrete the floor shut where we had done those uh, uh, changes of the direction of the toilet flange and the tub drain. And uh, you can't see it now because we got the, the pan set for the shower, but it's concreted underneath there as well around that two inch pipe that was coming up. We got our five foot shower all set in there. That's the uh, Kohler Sterling all put together. And once it's put together, it, it looks just like a one piece. You really, if you didn't know it was modular, uh, if you didn't know it was remodeler's tub, you, you just wouldn't know. It looks uh, looks like it, it's molded in one piece now that it's put together. Okay, I'd, I'd also like to point out that uh, when you rough in for a shower or a tub, in this in this particular case, it, it was a five foot shower. Um, the framing, you know, between this framed wall over here and the back side of the bathroom, the space from this wall framing to this wall framing across from it is 60 inches. It's exactly five foot. And the reason for that is is a rough-in tub or shower is is exactly 60 inches wide. And it gets fastened to the to the stud work before drywall goes in. Alright? These units, whether it be tub or shower, always get mounted before drywall. Alright? And if this would have been a four foot shower, we'd have exactly 48 inches from this wall to this wall. If it was a 36 inch shower, we'd have exactly 36 inches between the stud work. All right, so if you were wondering what the rough in framing is for tubs and showers, the width is always exactly the size of the unit that you're buying. Three foot, four foot, five foot, whatever it is, that's, that's the distance between the framing for your side walls. Now the depth, from the back wall out to the end doesn't really matter all that much. It's normally going to be somewhere between 32 inches or 34 inches from the back wall to the front edge. And that would be the depth out of the corner to the front. All right, there we have our uh, plumbing 100% done down here for the drain. Uh, our shutoffs uh, are not on yet. We just put on some temporary nipples. These are half inch nipples that we threaded in to the drop ears and we have a temporary cap on the end here. Now there is water in these lines. Everything's pressurized, so if there was any leaks, we'd know about it. We like to pressurize our water lines and then double check all of our crimp rings, around all of our crimp rings, around all of our uh, fittings that we use to put the PEX water system together. We can check 
all these fittings for uh, for leaks because they're now pressurized under full water pressure. All right, so everything's all put together and in its uh, final location, hot and cold water for the uh, for the sink. Down here we have a cold water line coming down for our toilet. Now, incidentally, the way we do it is depending upon how tall the base trim is. Uh, we'll set the height of the pipe coming out of the wall for the for the toilet supply according to that that trim height. Now we got three and a half inch base trim going in, so we came up eight and a half inches to give ourselves plenty of room off the floor to the center of our uh, supply for our toilet. And as far as left or right, it's generally on the left because standard toilets have the inlet for the water on the left hand side of the tank. So you want to be on the left side of your center, okay, of your of your toilet. And we come over off the center, and that's the center line of our toilet right there. We come over about eight to nine, ten inches, and then come up that well, in this case eight and a half inches. Alright, you just want to stay above the top of your base trim with your toilet supply. Alright, so there's our toilet coming up in its proper place, redone. And that's pretty much all we have to talk about in, in here for rough in. Now if we go back over here to the bar, same thing. We got our temporary three inch, half inch nipples. Got them threaded in with Teflon tape so they don't leak. Now this is all coming off later. We're gonna put a nice brand new shiny three inch chrome nipple on here and then we'll thread on a half inch to three eighth inch shut off. Once we get our cabinet set, okay, we'll, we'll put all that new hardware on. This is temporary. Temporary plumbing endings here. So that's 100% done. Uh, I will point out that with the PEC system, we use the things called talons. Talons are clamps that you can buy. They have a, a preset nail in them. And it's nice to put the talons on every couple feet or so just to neaten things up and to keep your, your PEX line from flopping around. So, we, you know, we have one there. We put a talon back here to hold it nice here. You know, you just it neatens it up. And secures everything so your like I said your PEX line is a uh, very flexible line it's not like copper so it's important to use those talons uh, back over here in the sewage ejector closet we only have one pipe coming in from our rough end it's our vent line all right this vent line is coming over it's a two inch it's coming over from our bathroom sink uh, it's coming into this unfinished closet where the sewage ejector will be and again we're going to be tying into that pre-installed two inch vent that was put in by the builder. We'll cut that cap off and we'll connect our new pipe up to that. Once we get our sewage ejector plumbing coming up out of here, there'll be one big tie-in back here and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Also, while we're here on the back side of the shower, we do have our, our shower valve put in there. I told you we were gonna put some more wood blocking in there. We put that piece of two by four across there and we mounted our valve to that. All right, we centered our valve. Uh, the valve, incidentally, is always centered on the drain. So we're gonna come inside here. Our drain, if you recall, was, uh, was 14 and a half inches off the framing in this direction, off the back wall, and was eight and a half to the center of our drain on the front wall. So what we did in here, if you can look here, if we come up the wall, if we pan up, there's our rough end valve coming in. It's exactly in line with our floor drain. <clears throat> and if we go up higher, we can see that there's our shower head right there. All right, again, we have a temporary nipple and cap on there to keep the pressure in the, in the pipes. And, and we did use the copper. Remember I told you, we, we always come off our valve in copper up to our shower head. And if, we, if this would have been a tub, we would have came off the bottom. You can see a piece of copper over there. That's just a stub out with a cap on it. That hard piped copper would come down to the tub spout as well. And that's really important to know because PEX is used everywhere now. And a lot of times guys will think they can come off the valve in the PEX as well, but you really shouldn't. Now you can go into the valve with PEX. You can see we've got PEX on the left side and the right side back there. You can come in and pack some crimp rings on, but coming out, stubbing out, always use copper. You get greater water pressure that way. Okay, so that wraps up the rough and plumbing 
uh, series here. Uh, I hope it helps you if you're planning on doing a bar or a bathroom in your basement. Now I know this didn't have all the nitty gritty little tiny details to exactly what I was doing with all that uh, drain line stuff and water line stuff, but if you're interested in uh, doing your own plumbing, I do have a video series over at the Basement Finishing University. It's called the uh, BFU 2.0, Basement Finishing University 2.0. Um, if you're interested, you can, you can go over there and check that out and learn more about it. Uh, and uh, it'll help you with your basement plumbing. It's very detailed. I do have a link in the description below if you want to go check that out. Again, I'm Eddie Case. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It helps our channel. And if you haven't subscribed to the Basement Finishing Man YouTube channel yet, please do. I got a lot more good basement finishing videos coming your way. And I'll see you in the next video.